Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Sustainability Shorts 2024 with me, Helen Clarkson. This is our short and sweet interview series uh, that we're doing in the run-up to Climate Week NYC 2024, where we discuss the topics that are on everyone's mind. And today we're talking with Sangaban's Claire Padini, Senior Vice President of Human Resources and Corporate Social Responsibility, and Pascal Evar, Director of Sustainable Business Development. Worldwide leader in light and sustainable construction, Sangabad designs, manufactures, and distributes materials and services for the construction and industrial markets. Sangabad is present in 76 countries with more than 160,000 employees and is committed to achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. So welcome to you both. It's really great to have you here. It's good to be there. How are you doing? Hi. Good. So we're going to get straight into it. You've been accelerating sustainability in lots of different areas of your work. So can you tell us how you're integrating sustainability into your organization's overarching business strategy? Yeah, well, thanks for inviting us and, and asking this question. Actually, Sagoba's commitment to sustainability in sustainability is largely guided by its purpose, you know, making the world a better home. And it's also completely embedding, embedded in our in our vision, in our strategy, just to become the leader in light and sustainable construction. Um, and to um, to do so and to achieve uh, our commitment, we actually, I always say, we work on two feet. Uh, one is to maximize our impact, meaning that we are proposing and selling to our customers solutions that reduce their own. Uh, I would say footprint or CO2 emission that reduce the carbon content of the building, that reduce uh, the CO2 um, you know emission during the the life of the of the building. So that's how we maximize our our impact to to customers. And of course, at the same time, we minimize our own footprint. And as such, we are committed to net zero carbon by 2050. And, and just to you know. Um, make sure everyone understands how construction is key for sustainability and net zero carbon. Construction accounts for between 25 and 40% of the CO2 emission worldwide. So nothing will happen with without construction, I would say fighting CO2 emission because this sector is key. And by the way, it also consumes around 50% of the resources in the planet. So Saint-Gobain as a leader, is largely part of the solution. That's great. Yes, you're right. Such an important sector from the kind of use of materials, design, all those aspects. Um, can you tell us a bit about how you're collaborating with other organizations to accelerate market transformation? The construction sector is uh, quite a complex sector. It's a value chain of different stakeholders involved in the decision-making process, as well as in the implementation of the different solutions. If we want to be able to accelerate the max market transformation, we need to stop working in silos. Uh, mainstreaming sustainability, mainstreaming innovations means that we have a better dialogue and a better collaboration between those different uh, elements in the value chain. To achieve that, we need to bring people together to first better understand their common uh, understanding of the situation, they need to share on the possible solutions. That's why we have uh, created the Observatory for Sustainable Construction, mm. which is a, a good tool for us through the barometer, through the magazine, and through the talks that we organize to share information on what people think of sustainable construction, what people expect, and what solutions exist. We need uh, also to uh, demonstrate what is already possible on the market. Um, solutions exist, so it's more uh, a matter of how to bring those solutions into life. So we need to cooperate with other stakeholders, if the investors, designers, developers, contractors, to have um, better practices in place, to have good business cases that we can feature to the rest of the world to say, look, this is what can be achieved. This is what is possible today. And once we have those good practices, those business cases, we can turn to policymakers because at some stage we need also to have better market conditions, to have better policies 
more supportive of better construction. So to turn towards policymakers, we need also to engage together to demonstrate that it is not a matter of single interest. It is a common interest to have better policies to accelerate the market transformation of the built environment. To do that, we have different kinds of collaboration with stakeholders through trade associations, but also through ad hoc coalitions with different kinds of stakeholders. What is very important is to embark the entire value chain into these different kinds of coalitions. Great. I think that's such an important way of looking at it as a system and, and all those parts in the system. And I agree that you know, to, to meet the speed, us understanding how these things come together as systems from policymakers through the value chain is so important. So with that, are you optimistic about our collective ability to meet these challenges? Oh, yeah, we are. We are. We are definitely providing. We, um, <laughs> I would say providing. We, we, we move now. You know, we move now because, um, you know, Remembering the, the the importance of the construction sector in this uh, you know climate change uh, fight, we need also to um, uh, to remember that eighty percent of today's building will still be in place in twenty fifty, and at the same time, uh, you know uh, taking into account the uh, uh, increase of urbanization, the increase of population in the developing world, but also in the uh, dynamic countries like Canada or, Aust or Australia, um, half of the building that will exist in 2050 needs to be constructed between now and 2050. So there's, here there's a huge opportunity to build with light and sustainable construction using Saint-Gobain solutions, building that will be low carbon embedded or that will be such, you know, that will have such a good insulation that uh, obviously uh, there will be much less need of, of energy uh, to warm or to cool them. So both working on the construction side and the operation side of the new building will definitely uh, help uh, to achieve the, the, the very low uh, carbon, uh, I would say, economy that we are all trying to build. But it takes time. So, you know, a week is a week, a month is a month. We need to, uh, we need to be uh, uh, right on it now. And we have the solution. I mean, the good news, the good news is that, you know, contrary to other sectors where you need uh, technological and leapfrog, in the construction sector, the solution exists. We have additives to put, um, you know, the, to put in, in, in cement or concrete so that they become low carbon. We have insulation envelope. Sangoba has solutions, so we, we can work on it right now. Maybe to add on what Claire said, definitely we have already uh, solutions to meet uh, most of the challenges. And we know that uh, because we are mainstreaming more and more sustainability into our innovation processes, we will have better and better solutions even. So we, we are optimistic that we will do better and better. Uh, and we, we can be also optimistic because we we see that uh, uh, the different stakeholders uh, start to share the, the same conviction that we need to scale up and uh, the identification of the levers is already there. Uh, we need to better train, to better educate the market We need and, and the professionals. We need to raise awareness among uh, the general public and we need also to secure the financing. So th this identification of the levers is there. So it's no, it's more today to meet those challenges, to find the good way to better educate, better train, better inform and better finance the project. So we are already one step further, not, not thinking of what to do, but how to do it. Yeah, and to and to and to revolve on what uh, what you said, Pascal. I think what is interesting also is the ability of the sector and of Saint Gobain to to innovate. I mean, last year you certainly know that uh, Saint Gobain has been the first player in the world to achieve um, uh, net zero production uh, scope one and two in flat glass, as an example. That we are also the first uh, um, manufacturer to test. Uh, 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 flat glass production with 30% hydrogen replacing uh, natural gas. Or we are also the first producer to be able to, to start a, 
um, 100% decarbonating uh, production of plasterboard in Norway by the electrification of the of of, of the plant. So uh, you know we are also innovating each and every day so that we we are putting on the market low carbon offer to maximize our impact, and we are also decreasing our own footprint by uh, you know changing our energy mix uh, as an as an example. That's great. Well, thanks to both of you. And it's really great to hear you talking through these innovative approaches that you've been taking at saint um, to really drive sustainability through the business and, and get a sense of that overarching strategy. So thank you both. And to find out more about saint projects, learn how you can integrate them into your organization's strategy, join us at Climate Week NYC on September the 22nd to the 29th. Um, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.